dudes. What if you ate two times your body weight in protein for eight weeks? That is what we're gonna look at today. Today is a classic study from Jose Antonio. The study was done in 2014. And in the study, they overfed individuals two times their body weight in protein or 4.4 grams per kg of body weight. We're gonna look at some of the findings and some of the psychological implications for uh, what that means for you. So if you're interested in that or anything bodybuilding and psychology related, hit subscribe and let's get to it. So the number one thing of five things is we found out that you can overeat protein and not necessarily gain fat. Uh, most of the participants uh, ate five and a half times the RDA of recommended protein intake per day. Now that was roughly 4.4 grams per kilo or two times uh, their body weight in pounds per day. For reference, 170 pound individual, that's like 340 grams of protein a day. That sounds pretty awesome to me, but not everybody can take that in. So who were the participants in this study? So the participants were 30 resistance trained uh, men and women. Now they were resistance trained uh, for at least eight plus months before the start of the study. So that is something to keep in mind too. So some of these individuals uh, could have been uh, new to resistance training, relatively new to resistance training. So that's something to keep uh, in the back of your head. And the age ranges were in the uh, low to uh, late 20, so 21 to 29. And a direct quote from the study, despite consuming significantly more calories and protein, there was no change in body composition. Now, this is very interesting, and it does challenge the sort of calories in, calories out model when it comes to overeating just protein. Uh, the high protein group ate 800 plus extra calories and still no fat gain. However, just to be clear, this was not a free for all. So the only thing they changed was the protein. Carbs and fats remain the same. So presumably uh, they would have been at maintenance calorie for a set time for this uh, to set their fat and carbohydrate intake. So that's sort of how the researchers uh, made sure that they were only increasing their uh, protein values uh, throughout the course uh, of the next uh, eight weeks is they set their fats and carbs and generally they maintained within a small range there. Coming back to resistance training, uh, again, like I said before, the uh, subjects were resistance trained for eight plus months. And so for us, anybody who has been bodybuilding or training in a bodybuilding style fashion uh, for a while, uh, this is a good indication that this study may be relevant to us. I think the power in a study is how generalizable is it? And I think it depends. And so this study may not generalize to a population who doesn't ingest um, high amounts of protein or more specifically because of the weight training, doesn't necessarily uh, weight train um, on, a, on a weekly basis and is uh, regularly doing that. So this study may be generalizable only to a sample or population of individuals who regularly weight trains, which if you're watching this channel, you probably regularly weight train. So weight training, good check possibly helps with partitioning protein to weight maintenance or energy expenditure. Last and most interesting thing to me is that this study sort of highlights that this may be a cutting hack. So if you are dieting uh, or if you are reverse dieting, uh, this study supports the fact that if you maintain your fat and carbohydrate intake, you can increase your calories without necessarily putting on body fat and you can maintain your muscle mass while you are still weight training. And from a psychological perspective, if you are to increase protein, we know that protein is highly satiating, uh, especially in whole foods forms. So your eggs are gonna be more satiating than something like a whey protein shake. So sort of biasing our intakes, if we are going to increase our protein intake to uh, whole foods, uh, eggs, egg beaters, things like that, or uh, a casein protein as opposed to a whey protein is going to help with satiety. And then also the net benefit is those foods are gonna come with zero carbohydrates or zero fats or as close uh, to zero as you could possibly get. Shortcut and main takeaway, if you're going to accidentally eat more food, uh, make it more protein and try and make it very lean sources of protein so that you are not increasing the levels of your carbohydrate and fat intake for the day. A few more implications for physique athletes. So uh, reverse dieting may tolerate uh, higher protein intake. So when, if, whenever you're thinking about increasing uh, your fats and carbohydrates, uh, perhaps um, if you've ever dieted to um, extremely low body fat percentages before, perhaps by increasing your protein intake first, you can start to tackle some of those uh, satiety cues um, that are going to be ramping up uh, and increasing um, as you begin introducing more and more foods into your diet. The messed up thing is, once you start to come out of diet, you get hungrier and hungrier uh, as the weeks progress. So by ramping up the protein, you may be able to 
stymie some of the initial body fat gains. However, you are going to want to put on some body fat, but this may help with uh, some of the odor overeating that occurs um, with reversing out of a diet. Uh, so this protein overfeeding may act as some kind of a psychological safety net. And as we know, so more satiety equals greater adherence. And really that's the name of the game whenever it comes to dieting. A diet will be successful if you can adhere to it. One issue here, however, is that if you are going to actively uh, try and eat uh, more protein or double your body weight in protein, it can be challenging psychologically to even ingest that much protein. Uh, so uh, definite positive uh, mental advantages whenever you are reversing out of a diet. Uh, however, if you are at maintenance calories or you're in a surplus, I don't know that there's much of a use case for this. Uh, I think you could uh, endeavor into try and do some body recompositioning. Like for me right now, my uh, maintenance calories are about 3000. And so I could just, I could just take uh, my fats and my carbohydrates and leave them right about the same. And then, uh, you know, uh, ramp up my protein, you know, an extra however many hundred grams or so. And I could see body composition wise and weight wise what that does, but that would really be for purely uh, experimentation. The use cases that I see, um, this being beneficial for physique athletes is really just uh, reversing out of a diet or if you are wanting to sort of play around with maintenance calories and every now and then you get a craving and you want to uh, you know eat something sweet you could have a bit more casein protein or if you're a uh, what's it called umami person you can have something a bit more savory ladies and gentlemen if you found that helpful and you're interested in anything bodybuilding and or psychology related hit subscribe leave me a comment and i will catch you in the next episode for something bodybuilding or bodybuilding and psychology related Peace.